हेलो एवरीवन हाउ यू ऑल वेलकम बैक टू सुनने आई एस गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर फिट एंड हेल्दी एंड आई मस्ट बी वर्किंग हार्ड टुवर्ड्स योर 2024 अटेम्प्ट गाइस नाउ दिस सेशन इज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस दैट हैज बीन आस्क्ड बाय यूपीएससी इन द सब सब्जेक्ट ऑफ हिस्ट्री दैट इज एंशिएंट हिस्ट्री गाइस नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द पीवाईक्यूज एंड सीइंग इट टॉपिक वाइज वी हैव टू हैव द सर्टेन माइंडसेट जनरली व्हाट व्यू पॉइंट और व्हाट माइंडसेट most of the student have regarding this ancient history and also of medieval history that sir the cost benefit is very less that means we have to study a lot of sources vast books we have to cover and the questions that are being asked is one or two only now if you are having this type of thinking that means you are not analyzing the pyqs correctly guys in recent trends in recent 4 or 5 years you have seen how ancient history has become important and you will see that 3 to 4 even 5 questions are being asked from ancient history right so first of all we have to have the mindset like why we have to do this ancient history and medieval history what benefit we will get because history overall overall in history what do you have to read ancient history medieval history art and culture and your modern history and for me it's world history too so what is the importance of doing ancient and medieval history first of all we'll understand this guys before starting right i want you to sit back and relax and understand because if you will understand the psychology of upsc by analyzing the pyqs then only you will be utilizing your sources in the right manner otherwise you will be reading the non necessary stuff the fodder also you will be studying you will be studying whatever written about the uh, west asian history in the in your textbook in your ncert you will be focusing upon that too so these pyqs are our guiding light we have to understand it very correctly and this particular session will be enough to make your foundation guys right what problems we face while studying ancient history why we get bored why timeline is very important all things will be discussed and in this particular session only i'll be giving you the full fledged solution to have this ancient history and medieval history on your tips specifically i am right now focusing upon ancient history guys right those students who are of prp that is prelims for revision program who are associated with this program must be have must have seen the revision classes too but those revision classes are also short revision classes right so i'll be telling you how you have to cover the pyqs and in how the pyqs will become your guiding light guys that will ultimately help you to filter out the necessary information from your standard sources so why first of all you have to understand the the subject medieval history ancient history why so overall the prelims pattern you are seeing that it is getting difficult year by year the cut off is decreasing every other exam you take guys every other exam apart from civil services the cut off will be increasing but in upsc csc prelims the cut off is decreasing what is happening that means the prelims is getting difficult questions are absurd random right and whatever like let me discuss like what subjects do you have in prelims the main subjects you have in your prelims is you have to study first of all the major segment history main subjects i am asking you have to study polity you have to study environment these are your main static subjects you have to have the hold over your next subject is history polity environment economics what else do you have try to listen it guys try to have 100% concentration over here i am telling you this mindset no matter how much information you collect but the mindset should be right and that mindset should be in line with the upsc trend that's why with the limited information you will be clearing prelims i always tell that why certain students who have cleared who had cleared prelims prelims once or who has like cleared the whole examination who are in merit list also appearing in services and again when they are giving attempt of upsc without preparation they are able to clear prelims year by year and some students can clear prelims year by year but most of the students are not able to clear prelims even once after even given after even giving like four five attempts why this is happening that means something they are doing differently with their limited knowledge they are appearing again and again at their qualifying prelims you have to understand the mindset guys right so history polity environment economics what else we have science and tech as the major subject what else do you have over here geography so these are your major static subjects guys right from these static subjects when you will analyze the recent prelims there are 100 questions which they are asking 
and for all these subjects you have your standard sources i am giving you now we are not directly jumping into the pyq so i am giving you that why this subject is important first of all why ancient and medieval history you cannot leave or for the sake of this prelims you cannot leave any subject which is written in the book which uh, which is written in your syllabus guys so out of this 100 question you will find every year you will see that you are only sure or half sure about only 30 to 40 questions guys or as the prelims is getting trickier year after year as i'm saying you so this ratio where you know the question where you have heard about those part particular topics are only 30 to 40 questions that means you are comfortable in attempting these 30 to 40 questions that means these 30 to 40 questions are coming from your standard sources of these six subjects whatever you are reading that means the standard sources the time which you are taking in one year by reading the standard subjects of these six subjects that are coming in the form of 30 to 40 questions that do not directly understanding so these 30 to 40 questions you are sure about that okay i have attempted this and every year you will see this this is the upsc pattern if you don't know and rest 70 to 60 to 70 questions 60 to 70 questions i'm taking taking roughly are completely random Sometimes they will be asking you some random stuff in your any in any subject like history, polity, environment, economics, and science and tech and geography. Any random current affairs will be coming. This random city you cannot target. Over here, you have to take calculative guessing. Right? Over here, you have to take the risk. And with this risk, risk, you will be clearing the prelims. This is actual prelims nature, guys, of which I'm telling you how UPSC is framing question. But these 30 to 40 questions, you can target them easily. These are targetable. And these 60 to 70 questions are calculative. By your limited knowledge, which you have gained from these static subjects, you have to apply. Understanding? Try to understand it very carefully, why I am telling you. So for these 30 to 40 questions to attempt it right, you will see that certain year, they will be asking easy question from history. Not every year, they will be asking easy question from history. Like in 2023 prelims, you have seen from ancient history, they have given very easy question. And that you will find easy only when you have read it. At least the static part is good. When you have read, read it at least once with good understanding. Not just for the sake of completing the pages. But you have the right mindset, you have the right timelines in your mind about ancient history, medieval history. So over here, you are seeing that ancient history, medieval history are asked very easy. In 2023 prelims rest of the topics were difficult and typical but every year you will be seeing the shift that out of these 30 40 questions sometimes you will be seeing the polity questions will be easy sometimes economics question will be easy sometimes science and tech question will be easy why what i'm trying to say is that at least you try to have all these static subjects standard sources standard sources i'll also be telling you all these static subjects on your tips that whatever the syllabus is whatever ncrt has written i will have it on my tips guys right so now i am taking out this history over here so you have to have all these subject static content on your tips in order to target these 30 to 40 questions correctly and then out of this 60 to 70 questions in the examination you have to do 30 more so 40 plus 30 so that 70 80 questions you have done in which 30 you have done calculating guessing and 40 are more probably you are right in them i hope you are understanding that is why you don't have to leave any of the topic because you don't know what questions they will be giving easier in nature in the next prelims they might be giving you from again medieval history will be coming easy but you have not read medieval history even once thinking that the cost benefit is less so that means you are doing you are like decreasing your chances of doing these static part correct so aapka isme to bhul jao fir aap ye jo completely absurd or random questions are I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say, guys. I am again repeating it that you have to target so that whatever easy questions are coming in the examination, you should be in a position to solve them because those easy questions will be known to all aspirants because they are working hard. If you are first attempter, doesn't uh, doesn't mean that the other person, your competitors, are also first attempters. They are they have given four or five attempts already. So you have to have this mindset that they are reading very hard every subject, every standard source. They are reading very hard right so let us see history and in history we have seen different component guys like over here we have ancient history in today's topic we are we will be covering ancient history medieval history modern history and parallelly your art and culture should also be go 
and for the means perspective you have your world history so understand that in this in this session is about ancient history so ancient history first of all there are a lot of things in ancient history so what to study in prehistory what to study in ivc what to study in uh, modern times gupta times i will be telling you through this pyqs we will be making it clear that in every topic because this is a topic wise pyq discussion so i will be discussing you that every topic should be seen with different perspective not every topic you need or too much information about some topics are less asked some topics are more asked more frequently question will you will be seeing so we'll be seeing this ancient history part right guys so let us focus upon the ancient history trend in recent year first of all they go understand it before going into the pyqs directly that from this topic indus valley civilization we have four question we will be seeing it topic wise but first of all you try to have that from ancient history what is being asked overall what are the themes which we have to focus upon can you guess some themes i am not asking the topic guys theme theme means broad themes what they are asking from here let us discuss that first i hope you all must be getting guys first of all we will be seeing the themes why we are seeing the themes so that in the back of our mind while reading the topics while seeing the pyqs this theme should revolve okay they are asking from the, here like they want us to have certain knowledge about ancient history so what themes they are asking first of all you will find that they are focusing upon the timelines guys the timelines sense should be there upsc wants you to have this timeline sense how i'll be showing you the pyqs right now we are not jumping into the topic wise discussion i hope you all must be understanding are you all understanding are you all connecting with me please uh, comment guys if you are all connecting with me and we should go ahead and be patient because this session we will be understanding the whole crux of ancient history so by the pyqs if you will analyze you will see that upsc wants us to have timeline sense what do i mean by timeline timeline sense i meant that upsc while giving question he, they are mentioning that what was happening in 7th century bc or 7th century ad what was the political scenario of india at that point of time are you even comfortable in the timelines i have seen 90 to 99% of the students will not be comfortable in timelines if i say what was happening in 15th century ad or 5th century ad what was happening in 5th century bc can you tell me can you even tell me 7th century bc is what like 700 to 600 or 600 to 700 bc this type of information you should be fixed about guys right this is not the full fledged class is going on but what i am giving you some sense that while you are reading while reading while analyzing pyq uh, while uh, when you will go through your standard books you have to understand this type of knowledge that in 7th century bc that they are being asked about 700 to 600 that means the rise of basically rise of buddhism and jainism will be starting 600 to 500 6th century bc onwards like in the bc rise of Jan uh, mahajanpads will be starting in india invasions will be happening in the form of akmenian iranian and greek invasions like this they are asking question let me show you the pyq how i am so these pyqs that's why they are the guiding lights what upsc wants us to know what information because the ancient history is vast but what how you will select that this part is being focused upon that means whatever happening through timelines we, i should know the major empire like in uh, second century ad the post modern period was going on in fifth century ad the gupta period was going on in eighth century ad the tripartite struggle was going on and this will happen only when you are studying it rightly not just a fake not just the sake for completing your book or reading page by page but have to have the right understanding and i'll be telling you how you will have all these things on your tips guys just be patient see this recent question of upsc 2023 prelims guys and those who are my students must be very comfortable in solving these type of question because we are analyzing in a very we are not understanding ancient history or history from the social science perspective right we have made it completely scientific from the upsc oriented way so see this question i do not want we will be solving it while analyzing it under the topics because this is topic wise discussion but right now i am discussing you the themes which are broad themes so over here you will see how many of the above dynasties established their kingdoms in the early 8th century ad i hope you must be getting what i am trying to say means early 18th century may what was going on in the indian political context 
means what is early 8th century are you even understanding that means 700 to 730 AD what was going on this is early 8th century AD what these dynasties present then right now I'm not solving it I'm just showing you the themes guys we'll be solving it like when we will see it topic wise so that means UPSC already know that you must be having this understanding of timelines now he is asking now they are asking in detail information about that particular time 2023 prelims guys last year prelims i'm saying this year 2024 surely i'm saying you one question on timeline based like what was happening in 6th century bc like which of the political happenings were happening in the 6th century bc like this they will be asking you see 2021 prelims again from the decline of Guptas until the rise of Harshvardhana in the early 7th century means 600 to 625 AD they are focusing upon early 7th century AD guys that means what was happening what they are Guptas what they are Parmaras, Pushyabhutis, Mokhari, Yadavas, Matrikas right now again I am not solving we will be solving it but try to understand that if I am saying it right or not are you understanding that timeline sense is they want us to understand these timelines to have these timelines that what was happening in 3rd century AD, 5th century AD, 6th century AD so this timeline sense is very important guys why if you have done my class you can easily draw the timeline guys easily draw the timeline right now I am just showing you that how ancient history has been progressed you will not be very adept in this but those who have done my PRP revision class or have been my student of foundation or have been my student of crash course right 20 lakh bc to 1000 bc we have divided this whole timeline as prehistoric times or first of all let me just give you themes then i'll be showing you the timeline then we will be seeing the topic wise discussion right right this will be uh, good making some connection right so timeline sense is one thing which upsc is focusing about second thing what you will feel that second thing they are focusing upon sites sites based question they are asking frequently site based question how that this Burzon is where this Sohagada is where one of the following is IVC site or not because when you read IVC there are more than 400 sites of IVC not every site you will remember but at least whatever written in the NCRT you should know that Right, what are the Paleolithic site, what are the Mesolithic site, what are the Harsha site, what are the Gupta site, you should have it on your tips guys. Right, and through the revision course also of PRP, I have told you how you have to revise. Foundation and crash course student must be having it on tips. And if you are my student, write it guys, comment it if you are my student and you know that, okay, where are the sites present of Paleo, Meso, Neo, uh, Chalco, Megalithic. As you move ahead, you know every site that if I ask you Ban Sekhara is which site? If I ask you Bhattari is related to which of the dynasty? So right now I'm not solving it, I'm just giving you themes. Third, <coughs> side-based question. Let me show you some side-based question first. See over here guys, which one of the following is not a Harappan site? That means you should have the knowledge of Harappan site also, you should have the knowledge of Moran site, Harsha site. Then only you can differentiate. Now, when you will see Sohgada, you will say you have read this site in modern times. This is not a Harappan site. See this question of 2021 prelims. If you have prehistoric times in your tips, because from prehistoric times topic, only sites are important. Nothing else that how humans were developing, nobody will ask you. Everybody will have this understanding. But if you will analyze the paper, Bourzon is asked. And I'll show you when we will be discussing this question. I'll show you how this is very easy question with 99% of the people have not solved it, guys. So, Burzon is a prehistoric site. Yaneshwar is a prehistoric site. Over here, you will see that related to the life of Buddha, Avanti, Gandhara, Kusla, Magadha. Again, sites are being focused upon. Over here, you will be seeing Korkai, Pombahar, Muchri are related to this is 2023 problems, guys. So they are focusing upon sites, names. You can also term it as the terminologies section, right? So terminologies can also be included included in these themes. Similarly, you, these sites can also be under, covered under terminology part.
so terminologies while reading while reading on your own while i am making you learn something terminologies are important fourth important theme is your scholars scholars ho gaye you can say personalities you can say kings sultans emperors these are very important things and fifth is your miscellaneous where literature is being asked about theek hai literature will be asked any political information will be asked so let me show you the importance of scholars and personalities in recent years 4 5 years every year you will be seeing the question on scholar let me show you guys see this particular part though this is related to ma this is related more related to art and culture part but you have to understand that following region dhanya kataka is related to or if here at this region is this are they 2021 prelims guys or this is 2022 i guess we'll be seeing it when we'll be discussing it in a topic wise man are they ding nag nath muni now this ding nag is mentioned in one of your standard books in the ncert guys it is mentioned are they both buddhist scholar are they jana scholar are they vaishnava simply they are asking nobody is asking you the personal details of dingnang and what they have contributed they are simply asking that they are they from buddhism or jainism or are they from vaishnavism are you understanding guys right now i am not again i am saying we are not solving it i hope you all are connected right <coughs> scholars are very important see over here 2021 bhav bhuti hasti mala shameshwara are related to jain philosophers playwrights understanding so they are focusing upon these scholars past guys part bilhana uh, naya chandra suri nagarjuna soma dev suri again these are literature they are connected it with the literature this is 2023 prelims and this is one of the very easy question because while studying ancient history we see certain sources literary sources so that my students would have been would have solved this particular question very easily so these type of question increase your merit increase your chances of clearing prelims right so you have seen the themes basically that over here major themes are timeline sites terminology scholars and i will be telling you while discussing the pyqs that which topic is important which topic what perspective you should have right so let us start uh, our discussion on the topic wise question which have been asked and before understanding let me draw you the timeline first of all of ancient history timeline should be there so if you are part of prp prelim revision program or if you have been part of any part of my courses you must have seen that how we have fixed the timeline in every book you will see different in difference in timelines for the people who are seeing me for the first time who are understanding that what is being asked in ancient history you have to see that every book you will be seeing they will be giving different timelines for a particular prehistoric time more than ibc different different times you will be confused yourself so i have told always my students or my personal uh, suggestion would be that fix your timeline as per your convenience either you fix it or the timeline which i am giving you let that timeline be fixed in your mind that whatever ibc will be asked uh, ibc indus valley civilization will be asked automatically your mind should move towards the timeline of 2300 to 1750 bc automatically and all my students will be saying that right or wrong guys so this timeline will help you in the question because you have only you have only over here see you have only 1 minute to solve this question in that question you have to revolve your mind around 8th century ad to reach over there like they are asking about 700 to 725 it is self a typical task and those only only those who can uh, those only those who will reach up to this timeline those who have fixed the timeline in their head and then they will be understanding these dynasties right so over here you will fix the timeline and one timeline i am giving you throughout this pyq also i'll be telling you or my prp students must be knowing this foundation class crash course students must be knowing this that from 2 lakh bc till 1000 bc we have understood it in the form of prehistoric times this is one part one syllabus topic prehistoric times and under prehistoric times i have told you to understand what paleo meso neo mega these are lithic period and chalcolithic periods megalithic chalcolithic paleolithic mesolithic neolithic megalithic chalcolithic hai na 2 lakh 20 lakh 2000 it is spread 
Now in my class, I have told you that to remember the Paleolithic also. That Paleolithic is from 20 lakh to 10,000. Then Mesolithic 10,000 to 6,000. Neolithic 6,000 to 1,000. Chalcolithic is from 3,500 to 1,000. Right? I hope you must be understanding it. And in this particular part, you will be seeing one golden century or you will be seeing the advancement in civilization in the form of Harappa civilization. So over here, you will be seeing this as the 2300 to 1750 as your IBC. Indus Valley civilization. Second topic. This is your first topic. Then your 1500 to your 600 BC. What you will be seeing in this particular time period? Vedic age. Vedic age you will be seeing. And in this Vedic age you have seen that this is divided between early Vedic age and later Vedic age. And the bifurcation is because of the binding of iron. So 1000 BC is the bifurcation over here. You will be seeing it. After 600 BC, I have told you to mark another reference point 323 BC. And we have revised n number of times in the class itself. In my crash course, in my foundation, they must be having this on tip. So 600 to 323 BC, I have told you that few development taking. So 600 to 500 BC, first of all, what was happening? Over here, the rise of Buddhism and Jainism. Alternate religions were coming into picture. The way which Brahmins were showing was completely getting ritualistic, completely getting sacrificial in nature. So other sects were rising and out of those Buddhism and Jainism rose to prominence. Simultaneously, there will be rise of Mahajanpads will be happening. Simultaneously in the Indian political context. You have learnt 16 Mahajanpads and all their places. I know it. And after that, you will be seeing 500 to 323 pre-modern dynasties you study guys. And simultaneously, there will be innovations will be happening for the first time. I have told you, whenever India will be weak internally, conflicts will be hap happening in the mainland India, you will be seeing our northwestern frontiers will be susceptible. So always attacks will be happening. And initial attacks happened in the form of Persian invasion, Achmenian invasion, and your Greek invasion. Now, this is the PYQ discussion, guys. That's why I cannot focus much more on the detail. Right, but I'm telling you, uh, like if you have been any part of my course, then this might be very easy for you and you are revising it too, right? <coughs> I'll be telling you solution of this, how you will have entirely all these things on your tips. By the end of this session, I'll be telling you the full solution of having this subject on your tips, guys. So simultaneously, you have seen that uh, Achmenian invasions and Greek invasion are happening. Greek invasion in the form of Alexander, Achmenian invasion in the form of Cyrus, Darius and Circe. Yeah, then 323, those who have like, those who are understanding it, write it also guys that you are understanding and write uh, like advancedly that what will come, like 323, now modern times will be coming. So 180 BC, the modern times will be coming. Try to be very active, modern times. Under modern times, you have to be focused upon Chandragupta, Maurya, Bindu, Sar and Ashoka. I have told you to rectify, in the class itself, I have told you to rectify the timeline of Ashoka. Do you remember it? Can you write? Those students who remember the Ashoka timeline. Then you focus upon Mauryan. Then 180 BCE to 300 AD, what you focus upon? You focus upon the post-Mauryan times. And in your post-Mauryan times, I have told you what was going on in Indian scenario in post-Mauryan times, guys. Huh? I'm really sorry this map, but just you do like this. What was going on? Over here, you will be seeing the Morans have declined. So over here, Sunga and Kanva will be coming into picture. You study this in post modern Automatically, whenever I have told you, we have become internally weak. Attacks will be happening in the form of Indo-Greek, Sakas, Parthians and Kushans. Over here in the Deccan, new political identity, identity will be coming, Satavahanas. When you have these things on your tips, then you will understand that Satavahanas were the contemporary of Sungas and Kanvas. Not of Pallavas and Chalukyas, not of Harsha, not of Gupta, understanding. And in the Southern India history, we have constructed it from Sangamage in the form of Chera Chula and Pandya. This is the main thing you understand in post-modern times. Then 300 to 550 AD, you understand about it in the form of Gupta Empire. 550 AD. And then extend this timeline from 550 AD 
to 750 AD, you understand it in the form of Harsha Empire. And in my class, I take you through the maps also. Maps are of utmost importance. While seeing the PYQ, we'll be understanding it. <coughs> so over here, I told you that in 550 to 750. So overall, your timeline of ancient history will start from 20 lakh BC and end in 750 AD, which I have extended it over here. And in 550 AD to 750 AD, if I ask you to draw the map, you will say, Sir, very easy over here, Harsha will be existing and over here Chalukyas in the Southern Indian history and Pallavas will be existing. And if I ask you, now this is my question for all of you and see that how many questions, how many people are able to attempt this. I am sure that very few of you will be able to. I am drawing three maps guys. One is of, uh, let me say, uh, 400 to 450 AD map that means UPSC will be asking it in the form of early 5th century AD what was happening in Indian context 1, 2, 3, 4 statement this is your 580 to 600 AD and this is your 620 to 6 uh, or you say 700 AD that means this is being asked about they go, UPSC, mein how will be they asking? This is about the early 5th century AD. This is about the later 6th century AD. This is about the 7th century AD. That means 5th, 5th century, 6th century, 7th century. What changes you have seen? Try to comment it, guys. Like, write like this, that A, this is the A map, this is the B map, and C map. Just write the political power which were holding the power in the Indian territories. Let me see. Let me see how many of you will be knowing. 100% sure those who are my students can be writing it very correctly. Very aptly also because in this particular part, you must be knowing that I have told you to remember the Chandragupta 2 timeline, Samudragupta timeline, Chandragupta 1 timeline. You must be knowing that Chandragupta 2 timeline was from 380 something to 415 and this is the time period of Skandagupta and Kumaragupta also. So Gupta's power was overall over here guys. And parallelly to Gupta, you have seen that Vakatakas were holding the power over here and over here Guptas and Chandragupta defeated this Gujarat, last Gujarat ruler too. must be understanding Deekho, directly PYQ samajne se kuch nahi hoga. you have to understand that what was going on and mindset mein jab piche ye hoga. when you will be having this type of things in your mindset okay you have to pick this type of information because UPSC is asking that because we have understood it from the PYQ then only it will be fruitful for you the entire discussion guys I am telling you Otherwise, it will be very easy for me to just discuss, like I'll be discussing it like this. That which one of the following ancient town is well known, then I'll be marking you the answer. This is very easy for me, for me to do this guys, right? But I am giving you the holistic idea, the exact thing. Those students who are understanding it must be appreciating it too guys. 580 to 600, what was going on? If I ask you, that means Guptas have declined now. And the rise of Pushya Bhuti dynasty you will be seeing. So Pushya Bhuti, right now Harsha has not come because I have told you to remember Harsha timeline. That is from 606 AD to 648 AD. This was the timeline of Harsha. And Harsha was there, he united the whole kingdom, North Indian kingdom. But whereas before Harsha what was there, this is Pushya Bhuti dynasty. In Kannauj, Mokharis were ruling. In over here, later Guptas were there. In Bengal, Godas were there, Shashanka. In over here, Gujarat, Matrakas were there. Right, and the political scenario changes in when Harsha came, the entire North India he captured. Over here, he could not move south of Narmada because Chalukyas were holding power under Pulkeshin too. Over here in Southern India, Pallavas were also there. This type of understanding you will be having. You should have and you will be having if you have been my student guys and if you have been correctly understanding it then also you might be doing it right but mostly it does not happen accept your flaws first of all then only you will be able to improve if you are conceited if you know that I know everything I have read it and if you are not able to give the answer that means some some uh, somewhere there is flaw otherwise UPSC will make you humble guys because year after year uh, prelims is getting trickier right so let us move to the theme wise I have told you that how many topics we have like prehistoric times till now from prehistoric times only one question has been asked and that too in your 2021 prelims 
and people could not even gauge it that from, this question is from prehistoric times or from where right people could not understand it so see this question guys over here you see this question asked in 2021 only once from this topic prehistoric times you will see that they have asked burzon chandra ketugad and ganeshwar now from prehistoric times generally people don't do prehistoric times they leave it but over here you don't have to understand that how humans have civilized how humans were advancing in the form of stone tools in the form of climate change how they were developing fire these type of things are not asked because prehistoric times we don't have short short saboot short short proofs evidences because we only infer prehistoric by archaeological evidence understanding so these type of things will not be asked what will be asked the only thing which will be asked from prehistoric times from this part will be the site based question guys so those students who are new over here who are watching it for the first time that how to approach this particular topic don't give much focus upon or don't learn just read the lines but don't learn by heart it what do you don't have to by heart that how humans were developing nobody will ask you that but sites you have to by heart and those students who are my students they must have done it very rightly guys that burzo they have understood it in neolithic site and they have not only known burzo but they must be knowing about all sites if you have done the revision also you must be knowing that daujli hadeng chirand uh, payampalli all these sites are neolithic so these are not rock cut shrines and rock cut shrines developed a lot later so this is wrong in the examination what would have happened burzo you must be knowing so when you know that burzo first is wrong you could be eliminating some options so this is about 2021 but if this had would have been 2023 so these type of options will not be there 2024 prelims also these type of options will not be there now options are also changing so you should have a fixed knowledge that means the way we are studying you should have faith faith in me also faith in your, yourself also that the way we are studying it is apt appropriate so over here first is wrong so a this is wrong this is wrong the you are left with two options when you are in this situation you always go ahead with the question guys now chandraketu god you might not have heard ganeshwar also you might not have heard but ganeshwar you see it in the chalcolithic period so this is one of your chalcolithic site now if i ask you what are the chalcolithic sites can you tell me in the class i have told you adamgarh in the class i have told you this particular bagor pirbhanpur these sites i have told you over here in gujarat lalganj these are mesolithic uh, sorry these are mesolithic sites i am asking you about the chalcolithic sites chalcolithic sites are gelund ahar this is over here malwa kayath over here daimabad navegao add one more site also that is ganeshwar guys how you have to utilize this previous question that you have to see the part and adding information that has been asked in pyq right what about the neolithic site burzo gufkaral over here you will find chiran over here you will find daujli hadeng only northeastern site over here you will find hensgi payampalli pikli hal right and i have told you in the class that from this ncrt this ncrt you will be amazed for those students who know now they must be knowing but this is of 6th class ncrt guys that borzoins mentioned and you have to rectify all these sites and in the class itself i have made you rectify this right in the revision class it would not have been possible for me to revise again and again but in my crash course and in my foundation i revise it a number of times so that at least you should have this map or for the sake of these chalcolithic map chalcolithic sites you must be knowing about gelund ahar iran kayat navadatuli now there are n number of sites but i am saying you have certain sites fixed now one sites which you have to include is ganeshwara they will never ask jodhpura is where because jodhpura is present in rajasthan only so this is one of the chalcolithic site you will see while studying on your own those students who have not taken help of me or have not studied from me well while doing on your own you must be feeling this doubt also sir like mehargarh we have seen in neolithic also mehargarh is coming in chalcolithic also why mehargarh mehargarh will be coming in harappan also so these sites are overlapping i always say that it is not that if india is developing it humans are developing then every pocket of humans are developing in the same pace i have told you that delhi is accelerating in a different pace it is now 
becoming uh, the what do you smart city but whereas odisha's tribal people are still still living the thousand year old lifestyle they are in pvtgs tri primitive vulnerable tribal groups so everywhere advancement is not taking in the same place so similarly some places would have been advanced like they have with time they are advancing themselves but similarly in chalcolithic you will find that some pocket, uh, some pockets will be paleolithic only some pot pockets you will be neolithic only understanding so have clear mindset guys so this is the only question asked from the topic prehistoric times let me show you my timeline which we have drawn see over here so in the prehistoric times when you will be reading focus on paleo meso neo me uh, megalithic chalcolithic sites every site should be fixed and if I am asking the students who have done the revision course, if I am asking you the, can you write me some Paleolithic sites and Megalithic sites? Megalithic, two sites are mentioned in the NCRT over here. You will be finding Brahmagiri and Adina Chanalur. They are related to Megalithic. Now it does not mean that they were not having any Paleolithic culture. That does not mean that, right? So let us go to the Indus Valley civilization. Now Indus Valley Civilization, again what is important from Indus Valley Civilization guys, understand this first before trying to understand the previous question. Over here Indus Valley Civilization, you must be knowing that they were flourishing in this region, Northwestern region from 20, 2300 BC to 1750 BC. As per DP Agarwal, I have told you. Over here sites are of utmost importance guys. That where is Dholavira, Rangpur, Rojdi, Kalibangan, Rakigadi, Mithatal, all these Indian sites, you should have it on your tips. Also, you must be knowing that over here you will find Chanu Dado, Mohanju Dado, Surtka Gendor. Are, these are Pakistan, right now in Pakistani sites, right? So sites are very important. Their religious life, their cultural life, their political life. Like this, you should have notes. First of all, of sites and how this IVC were, uh, people were living in the political structure. Though these were dicey, debatable, so UPSC will not directly ask quality they were asking they were asking you about the religion society economy but they will not be they will be focusing upon sites more so from prehistoric and indus valley civilization you will be seeing site based question see this 2021 question guys which one of the following ancient towns is well known for its elaborate system of water harvesting I have told you in the class, I have been told, telling the students that whatever sites you have in India, at least know their importance. That why Chanudado is important, why Surkotada is important, why Kalibangan is important. And when you have read about Dhula Veera, you might have read that it has the system of, elaborate system of water har harvesting. Over here, we have got some 11 signs written in their script also. Right, so Dhola Vira is your answer guys, where they have built a series of dams and channelizing water into connected reservoirs. Very easy question for 2021 prelims. Now who will feel this question as easy? Those who have studied it at least once in a right manner. Otherwise, if you have left it for the sake of that ancient history and medieval history are, or do not have, that they have less cost benefit ratio and you have not touched this part, then you have missed an easy question which every people, every aspirant might have been, might be knowing this particular part. Are you understanding the cost you are bearing by not understanding the syllabus, but not uh, like reading at least the basic part, right? So your job should be Dhola Vira. About Dhola Vira, you should know. About Kalibangan also, you should know. Kalibangan is situated where, guys? It is in Rajasthan. What is this Kalibangan famous for? So over here, you know that in Kalibangan, first of all, by Bangan, you will be knowing that this is a Bengal factory. Also, over, over here, you will find keyhole skull surgery. Now, this should be your uh, way of understanding that while reading this IVC topic, you pick this PYQ, right? And PYQ sheet also, which we have given you and add this information at least. Apart from this, you try to read other sites also. First of all, you have to focus upon these four sites now or whatever sites PYQ, you will see it in PYQ. Focus upon these sites first of all. You will get some 10 sites from PYQ itself. Have the hold over 10 sites. First 10 sites. Then add 5 more. So to have the competitive edge. Okay, so Kalibangan you will be find that it is the only Indus Valley civilization site where there were no indication of mother goddess worship you will see. World oldest plow agriculture field you will be finding over here guys. And it has given the evidence of both pre-Harappan culture also and upper layer of Harappan culture too. See, when you study, when I make you study or whenever you study IVC, 
you study it in certain period like pre harappan because mature because advanced civilization will not happen automatically right now if we have smart cities then we have developed it, it from the village point of view first of all we were village oriented cities right we were having then we have converted into towns then we have converted into cities then now smart cities concept is coming pre harappan then you will be seeing mature harappan and then we will be seeing late harappans in some books over here early harappans are also mentioned though they are part of pre and pre harappans only theek hai i have told you in the class to remember their sites too amri kochi over here i have told you to remember in pre harappan mehargarh mature harappan sites are the mohenjodaro harappa late harappan sites are lothal right about this rakhi gadi you will find in about rakhi gadi that largest harappan site in the indian subcontinent not overall but in the indian subcontinent or in the indian site the largest site of indus valley civilization is rakhi gadi you will also see that people in harappan civilization have an independent origin and they have negated the ancient iranian farmer ancestry you will find over here that this is one of the five iconic sites announced by union finance minister during budget 2020 also cotton cloth traces or on silver and bronze objects will be find over here guys ropad ropad is famous for dog buried with human oval pit burials copper implements you will be finding terracotta beads and mangles you will be finding you must be understanding that you must also be understand that during the chalcolithic they were the humans were able to mix chal, uh, copper and stone but these harappan people were such that they were able to mix copper with what tin that's how they form bronze civilization right so this is your one question which has been asked in 2021 prelims guys in 2019 prelims you see again a site based question chahnu dalu now you should be knowing about chahnu dalu that it is a citadel less city there are no citadels it is basically the factory area where all tools weapons agricultural tools will be made right now this chahnu dalu you must be knowing so while attempting this you have crossed it that this is a harappan site we have to find north you must be seeing that kochi is also present in a gujarat region of india so this is a harappan site so this cannot be answer sohagoda you understand it in morren guys when you start studying morren i told you that there are some inscriptions related to morren and those inscription are junagadh inscription second inscription why which i tell you is sohagoda and by sohagoda you should know that this is a morren site which is in up so this should be the answer this is not your harappan site whereas disalpur is also your harappan site so understand now you have to add information this you have to do on your own while studying while giving time to ibc that you should have detail information about chanudalo kodji desalpur so you don't have to search any other site now you have to have like you have a lot of sites now kodji kodji is related to it is an early harappan site i told you this is a early harappan site where development has not taken that much just the transition from village life to town life that you will be seeing over here kodji and amri and i always tell you that amri if you have seen mohan jodado ritik roshan was from amri and he went to mohan jodado arappa right these were the modern cities of that time chanu dado it is famous for over here you will finding uh, find that these this is the part, particular part which have no citadel first of all and there are three different cultures you will find indus jhukar and changar culture you will be seeing over here it is famous for bead makers and other other things were made over here guys various factories you will be seeing figurines seals toys bone implements so you have to understand this information in detail like this much information if you will remember great next site is your desalpur over here this says desalpur site is in gujarat again from prehistoric ibc what is important sites so these sites should be on your tips these are ibc sites i have shown you three maps so over here you will see dholavira has been asked in examination chanu dalo kochi uh, over here you will be seeing <coughs> one more desalpur desalpur also you include over here in gujarat kalibangan is asked rakhi gadi is asked right so by the options itself you cannot ignore the options so answer is sohagoda but you see chanu dalu to kochi and desalpur they have asked so have information about them right guys so this is about your ibc now we will be moving ahead and we will 
come to our Vedic culture. And Vedic culture, I have told you from 1500 to 600 BC. And in this one bifurcation is on the basis of 1000 BC because we have found iron. And after that, we also call, call it as Iron Age after 1000 BC. And it has been divided into early Vedic age and I know that later Vedic age. So Vedic culture is divided into two. How do you study Vedic culture? I have always told you to study Vedic culture. First of all, you should study it in a transition. First of all, you should have the information about Aryans. Who were they? Where have they come from? As this is debatable, so not a lot of people will not. Means UPSC will not ask it directly, right? Though they will give it inference. Second, you have to know about the transition from later, from the early Vedic age, which is also known as Rig Vedic age, to later Vedic age. You will see the transition in the polity, in the economy, in the society, social society, in the religious too, religious aspect. You will be seeing the transition. How people were transitioning in polity to economy, how from Jana, Janapada was getting important. How the economy, now the pressure, initially they were pastoralist. Primary occupation was grazing, cattle rearing. Now the primary occupation will become in later Vedic age, agriculture. I have told you this. How society was not Varna based in early Vedic age. A comparatively that was egalitarian. Though certain differences, differences were there, but not a Varna based differences was there. But Varna based differences become rigid in later Vedic age. How there were, they were nature worshippers. They were worshipping Indra, they were personifying these uh, physical attributes to some person. Later on, only three gods, they, uh, they are being worshipped more. So like this, you have to do Vedic culture and the way uh, we have revised it, it in this manner only. And for those who want to have this particular entire medieval history, ancient history on tips, guys, we are soon be, we will be soon be launching the crash course. By that crash course, automatically that ancient and medieval you don't have to care about. That will automatically be in your tips, guys. Right? So let us see the question. Question number third, Vedic culture. With a reference to the difference between the culture, Rig Vedic Aryans and Indus Valley people. They are comparing it. In 2017, they have asked, guys. Now, Vedic culture is also not frequently asked. Only one question has asked in the recent nine years, that is 2017. They have asked first part. Rig Vedic Aryan used the coat of mail helmet in warfare. You must be understanding that Aryans were able to defeat the indigenous people. They were doing so because of good weapons, because of they were having horse and chariots, right? So this might be right. You will say that this statement might be right. This statement, not this part of the statement, whereas the people of Indus Valley civilization did not leave any evidence of using them. So you are saying that, okay, in the real examination, you will not be very sure about it. So you'll be saying, yeah, probably it is towards the right. So I'll be marking it right if I'm sure about other two statements, right? I'll be considering it a right statement. This should, this should be your approach guide. Don't directly say it or it is completely right. No. Second part. Rig Vedic Aryans knew gold, silver, copper. Rig Vedic Aryans they are saying. Okay. Whereas Indus Valley people knew copper and iron. Indus Valley knew copper and iron. Copper they must be knowing. Iron, iron has come 1000 BC later. After 1000 BC you will see iron. Whereas Indus Valley was from 2300 to 750. This is the importance of learning time means. So you will say this I am sure about that this is wrong. Two statement is wrong and one statement I am being positive about. So this B part will be wrong because over here two is there. D part will be wrong. So you are left with A and C. You are thinking that yes one might be correct. So whole now whole question is dependent upon this third part guys. Rig Vedic Aryans had domesticated the horse. Whereas there is no evidence of Indus Valley people have been aware of this animal. Now, when this question appeared in 2017, this was the most debatable hot question after you, peop, after students have come out of the examination hall. Most of the stu students were saying that this is right because Indus Valley people were aware of horse because horse evidence were found in Surkotada because in a lot of standard books, this is written. Some people were saying, no, some aspirants who have attempted 2017 paper, they were saying, no, this is wrong. They were not aware. So what we have to do? We have to wait for the UPSC answer key. That will show that UPSC is choosing that source that has considered that Indus Valley people were not aware of this animal that is horse. That means they have given this third statement wrong. That means they were not aware of this animal. 
not wrong but they are saying that there is no evidence of indus valley people having been aware of animal that means they are marking it correct that means as per upsc understanding indus valley people were not aware of horses guys so your doubt should clear the doubt was that in some of the standard sources this horse evidence is written in surakotla side of indus valley so that's why aspirants were confused in that point of time but now you should not be confused because indus valley because upsc considers that ivc were not aware of horses so this confusion should be clear once right done and dusted don't waste your time finding the evidences and all because you know it that upsc has marked it correct right so this is correct and first is also you are being correct about it so c will, c will be your answer this is how you will reach in the questions guys directly it will not happen and now the questions and now the options giving is also becoming very tricky right let us move to buddhism and jainism the most important topics till now we have seen what we have seen prehistoric times we have seen ivc vedic age from here this ivc is very important prehistoric is also important and over here you have to focus upon sites vedic age is not that much important but you should have the good understanding that how things were changing now the most important which you cannot leave or which everyone will say that kuch na karke jao ancient history mein to buddhism and jainism to zarur karke jao now this buddhism and jainism is overlapping some teachers teach you in art and culture too so your art and culture teacher will be telling you some aspects buddhism and jainism while in the class also i tell you to understand it in this following way and see guys you always be uh, ready that our five questions are coming from ancient history so out of those five question you will only be able to solve these three question two questions will completely random and that you will be knowing that this is random everybody is facing difficulty to solve this question so you will understand that this question is difficult not for me only but for everyone else but how will you know that this question is difficult or not when you have rectified the entire standard books that means these three questions you are saying that i am sure about it i know that this is from that standard book and that has come in the examination people might be knowing that and they must be attempting it but those questions who are not coming from the standard books this will be difficult for all so you might now you will be taking the calculative uh, guessing that this question will not be attempted by a lot of students this is will be difficult so i should leave it now you are taking the right decision because you have your strong static knowledge right so buddhism and jainism while studying buddhism and jainism you should always divide it as see i am giving you the structure how you should study it or just leave it up to me in the crash course i'll be doing it all okay i'll be making you comfortable in all these things buddhism and jainism you should have there first of all the details about their personal life in the whole entire ancient history personal details you will not study of anyone except mahavira and buddha right second you will be understanding their doctrines very very important that what about the doctrines of buddhism what about the doctrines of jainism third their councils if any happened buddhist council jainism councils their major doctrines philosophies are one and the same thing right and there are some prominent teachings guys so teachings and doctrines can also be considered as one and all but over here you can see the schism or types differences in buddhism like later on you will be seeing that there will be schism in buddhism there will be whom there will be mahayana not mahayana and hinayana will be later on sthavirvadin mahasangika then mahayan hiyan vajrayan in jainism you will be seeing uh, that digambar shwetambar sthanakvasi murti pujaka tera panthi bees panthi like this you will be seeing it right now if you focus upon the old names guys over here in buddhism and jainism this is a question has come in upsc 2023 dhanya kataka is the ancient name of amravati guys right in the ancient time this was known as dhanya kataka if i as you kannak puja or mahodaya was known as present day state dwar samudram like this ancient names i focus in the class or while reading your ncert you also focus that if they are saying that over here uh, a lot of names were present guys like for the odisha they were calling it toshali during the most modern time toshali toshali region right over here they was also telling it the kajapati kingdom was also over here so you have to understand in this way jeja bhukti was 
the today's Bundelkhand region. So you have to name, see the ancient names, and this has been asked multiple times in, in medieval also, in ancient also, right? So this was easy when only you will be knowing about the Nagataka. Otherwise, it will be futile for you to attempt. So like this question, you should attempt only when you know. Otherwise, leave these type of questions, guys. Okay, but what you have to understand from here that you have to focus upon the ancient terminologies, ancient names of the present day cities. And uh, you should have to know that. Again, this particular is on the basis of doctrines. And you will understand it, this. Souls are not only the property of animal and plant life, but also of rocks running water, many other natural objects not looked as on as living by other religious sects. Now while teaching your, and they are asking that this reflects one of the core beliefs of, that means doctrines, teachings of which of the religion, right? So that means they are asking you about, and while teaching I always tell you the debate of soul, what Buddhism used to consider, and what Jainism has their views on soul. Now this, this was very easy question. All must have uh, corrected it right if they have understood Buddhism, Jainism even slightly. Because in Jainism, Jainism always believed that the concept of soul. They believed that everyone is having soul and not to of living matter but of non-living too. Whereas Buddhists were saying that we don't consider anything as soul. Soul is nothing. Because why Buddhism were saying that? Do Vaishnava said or Brahmanical tradition believing in soul? Yes, they were believing in soul. Brahmanical Veda, Vedas or Vedanta philosophy is also believing in soul concept, guys. When they are saying Atma and Paramatma, they were discussing about that. Jainism is also saying about soul that there is something permanent. This body is imp this body is like impermanent. For short time, you are their body is there. But your soul is permanent. Jainism is believing that. Buddhism, why they don't believe, why they outrightly reject soul is because they say that we, there is nothing like permanence in this particular universe. Everything is in a transience. You must have studied in Buddhism, the Madhyamika school, the Sunyat doctrine. Means, Sunya, everything is zero. Everything, there is no permanent thing. And when they are saying, saying that there is no permanent thing, then how they can say that soul is a permanent thing? So that's why they did not believe in this soul concept. So Buddhism outrightly rejected soul concept. Jainism, Brahmanical religions were believing in this soul concept. Though Bra Brahmanical religions were believing in this uh, Paramatma or Brahma religion too, Brahm, Brahm aspect too, that we have to be ultimately the part of Paramatma. Every Atma is the part of Paramatma. So there is no difference between them. Right? So like this in the class, I will elaborately tell you the difference so that in the examination you can do it correctly. And uh, there are different different philosophies of Buddhism and Jainism. This is just one of the philosophy guys. Like in Jainism, Anikantavad you will find. And uh, so over here the answer will be Jainism. Very easy. You might also be guessed that this question, if you will do it wrong, then you have to pay the price because this question will be done rightly by most of the aspirants. Because this is a competition guys. This is not... A, the competition between this question and you. There is a competition between this question and everyone. Everyone would have done it correctly. Right? Third. Again, this is your... Over here, you will be seeing site-based question. Though from art and architecture part, you have to learn it. But I am discussing it over here, guys. So over here, you will find that base nagar. This is important from art and architecture also, guys. That base nagar is related to... And last year also, I have told you that there was one Greek ambassador that is Heliodorus. Heliodorus came to the court of Bhagavatra of Shunga dynasty guys and he erected one pillar, Heliodorus pillar or Garud pillar also that is known as and he converted his name from Heliodorus to Vasudev and that is not related to Shavite but Vaishnavite sect. So Bhagavad sect he was related to. The first one is wrong. Bhaja in is Maharashtra guys and this is a Buddhist cave shrine. This is right. Right. Sita Navasal is a Jain cave shrine. This is also right. So two statements are right. And this type of question you will only be able to do when you know all the three part. Right. Otherwise it will be difficult for you. When you see the art and culture uh, point of view, you see some Buddhist cave structure, you see Chana cave structure, you understand Bhaja Sita, Sita Navasal on that. Besnagar, in the uh, political conquest or political context, I have tell you, I have already told you in the, when uh, like in the Indo-Greek section. 
right that heliodorus comes from the indo greek that base nagar is there guys that is base nagar place only right so correctly matched are only two and three so only two will be your answer right guys now again this is 2023 very easy question the with reference to ancient india consider the following statement concept of stupa is buddhism buddhist in origin is it right or wrong when you understand that stupas were existing before buddhism also stupa concept was there right so you will find that this stupa before buddha you will be seeing that stupa means a heap of some dust dirt or uh, you will be seeing that a lot of soil or mud will be uh, accumulating and it will be for, for, uh, like forming a heap so that will was known as stupa and stupa was mentioned in rig veda too so it was not a buddhist in origin later on buddhist ashes was kept over here buddha material kept over here so it was associated more with the buddha right but the concept was before buddha already so this is a bit wrong guys means while giving the examination you might be feeling that this is wrong that's why i'm saying a bit wrong otherwise this is wrong only the statement is wrong but i am telling you the exact feeling which you will be having in the dd like examination time pe aapko kaisa lag raha hoga ye question thoda you will be feeling that this statement might be a bit tricky so you will be just leaving it right now read the second statement stupa was generally a repository of relics this is right stupa was a votive and commemorative structure in buddhist tradition this is right then you must see that these two statements are generic they are saying that they are buddhist traditions and they are being affiliated so this statement is wrong because they are saying that buddhist in origin very surely they are saying it first is wrong answer should be you have to find correct you have to focus upon here two guys correct or incorrect correct find so you have to mark it b only two are correct right i'm sure dekho there are a lot of uh, you will see a lot of keys in of different different institutes they have made one correct but i'll say one is wrong and you will wait for the upsc notice upsc answer key you will be seeing that they have also marked it incorrect right let us move ahead guys now see this question guys question number 5 2020 latest question with reference to the cultural history of india which one of the following is correct description of the term paramitas now paramitas is one of the teachings you will be finding you will if you are reading buddhism correctly you will be seeing that when you understand the faction you understand one faction in the form of hinayan and mahayan which came on later on which came later on in ad is during the time period of kanishka hinayan mahayan but before that i have told you that they were divided between sthavirvadi and mahasangika i'll be telling you so hinayan mahayan basic difference was if i ask you that hinayan if you are a part of hinayan then you will be attaining your salvation individual salvation concept was there individual salvation concept was there and if i am the part of that in uh, sang of hinayan and if i have attained salvation i'll be known as arhat arhat right but in mahayan there was no individual salvation concept but there was the concept of bodhi satvas and very correctly very aptly students might be uh, remembering in the revision class also i have told you that bodhi satvas were those who can you write it that delay that they know how to get they have worked so much hard that they know how to get salvation but they are delaying it they are not getting enlightened they are delaying it just for the sake of so that other people can get salvation they will help other people to get their salvation because they know the path of salvation so they are delaying it right but in order to have this bodhi satva they have to go through some certain perfection certain rules that they have to go through that rules are paramitas that means six perfection they have to attain compassion wise and these six perfection you don't have to know but these are like compassion you should have generosity you should have all the moral values you should have basically and you should also be going through the bhumis till now this have not been asked but bhumis are related to the bodhi satva's perfection understanding if i ask you why bodhi satva were not able were not getting their salvation what was the reason or what do you mean by salvation nirvan if i ask you see 90% of the janta will not be able to give me the right explanation of nir salvation nirvan enlightenment only my students will be able to give or for those students who are like who have studied on their own still you are able to give it that means you are studying in a right way enlightenment uh, in english in the western greek philosophy wisdom was it is it was known as wisdom kavalya in our brahmanical religion it was known as moksha these are synonymous to each other 
right synonymous terms what do you mean by this do comment it guys i'll be telling you in the last those people who know it write it right whatever you have the explanation i know different different explanation would be coming right and the people who know in the class itself you also try to know that how people are misguided or they don't even know that they are reading this enlightenment perspect uh, uh, like buddhism jainism is all about enlightenment a most concept was in the brahmanical religion also we have four goals of life what was that uh, dharma arth kam moksha right so what do you mean exactly mean by that you should be knowing that so paramitas are these are the perfections whose attainment led to bodhisattva path easy to identify guys if you know it if you don't know it then you will get confused in the examination this type of question you should leave if you don't know right see the next question guys again very important very easy not very easy if you don't have understood it in a right manner 2020 again asked from buddhism and jainism are you understanding how much questions are repetitively asked from buddhism and jainism that means it is of utmost importance and you have to understand it in the fixed way personal life of buddha personal life of mahavira personal or doctrines which they have achieved right which they were spreading as philosophies of buddhism and jainism you should be knowing it okay so over here you will be finding these term pravarjika shramana upasaka see while making you understand before going into the answer of this you have to understand that buddhism jainism buddhism was flourished by siddharth gautam and he was known as buddha the enlightened one now his disciples suggested buddha during his time period of 6th century bc that in order to propagate your learnings you should form one group and that group was known as sangha right and you know that the rules of sangha were made by later on by their disciples vinaya pitaka sutta pitaka vidhamma pitaka right you must be learning that but now the concept came over here guys now the who can be the part of sang initially the rule was like that that you have if you want to have the part of the sang you have to renunciate or you have to leave your family life and you have to come to sang and those people who have renunciated their family life renunciated their family that i am leaving my family i'm joining this sang put this tradition then i'll be known as bhikkhu is a, if i am the male and if i am a female then i will be bhikkhuni bhikshu or bhikkhu bhikshuni you can say bhikkhu and bhikkhuni this is one way you can be there but later on one more methods of entering the sang came people were saying sir i cannot leave my family but i want to learn your learnings teachings whatever you are teaching i want you be i want to be the part of this sang but i don't want to leave my family so sang said that you can also join but now your term will be upasakas so upasakas means lay follower that means you are living your family life too but following this sangha rules also so you have two options i have two options to go i can go as a upasak and i can go as a bhikshu to to attain what to attain nirmala salvation and if i have attained salvation i will not be known as buddha but i will be known as arhat as per hinian tradition and if this is a mahayan sang then i will be a bodhisattva देखो कितना इजी है कितना आसानी से यू विल बी लर्निंग इट राइट डोंट मेक इट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सर्टेन पीपल फील दैट इट इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बट इट इज नॉट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड गाइस राइट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इन अ राइट मैनर कोई भी चीज डिफिकल्ट नहीं है एनीथिंग इन दिस लाइफ इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट व्हाट इज डिफिकल्ट इज आवर पर्सपेक्टिव नजरिया अबाउट एनीथिंग है ना बिकॉज़ दिस इज नॉट रॉकेट साइंस गाइस रॉकेट साइंस इज डिफिकल्ट बट दीस आर सोशल साइंसेस सो ओवर हियर यू विल फाइंड दैट उपासका यू ऑल माइट बी नोइंग Lay follower of Buddhism. This is a right, guys. Shramana means Shramana are those. Shramana tradition means those who are not following the orthodox religions, guys. Right? Shramana were saying that those were those people who were believing in the ascetic life. Ascetic means sadhu wali life. Means you are uh, you are doing penance, tapasya, hard work. Right? Shramana means that. So it is not a priest with high status. No. pravarjaka renunciate renunciant and wandered this is right pravarjaka is right shramana is wrong upasaka is right so when you are sure about upasaka you are left with these three not much helping you can only only eliminate one part a but second is all, second is wrong guys so when you will eliminate this you will get b part 1 and 3 right but you have to know these terminologies right
now you see this 2020 question when your philosophy when your understanding of the teachings of buddha buddhism jainism is very right like if you know if i tell you like this teaching says that there is no one truth you cannot say that this is the truth ultimate truth of a particular path right there are various various perspectives so you will say that they are talking about an ekantavad different different perspective and an ekantavad is the philosophy of jainism right so see this question guys 2020 with the with the reference to the religious history of india the concept of bodhisattva is central to Hinayan sect of Buddhism. This is wrong, guys. You all know that this is central to Mahaya. Bodhisattva is a compassionate one on his way to enlightenment. So this statement is right, guys. Bodhisattva is a compassionate one on his way to enlightenment. He is on his way to enlightenment. But he has not, he will not achieve enlightenment. He will delay it. But though he is in the path of enlightenment only, but he will be delaying it. Right? Now, third is your Bodhisattva delays. See, first is wrong. So, when you have done that, you are sure about first is wrong. Whenever you are sure about, you try to eliminate. The two parts are wrong. You are getting sure that now you have to attempt this question. B and C you are left with. Two, you are feeling this is right. Read the third statement too. Bodhisattva delays achieving his own salvation to help all sentient beings on their part to it. That means, no, no, definition. They have already given the definition of Bodhisattva over here. So, two and three are right. Right, guys? See the next question again asked in 2020. Very important, very conceptual. With the reference to the religious history of India, consider the following statement. Sthavirvadin belonged to Mahayan Buddhism. Lokatarvadin sect was an offshoot of Mahasangika sect of Buddhism. The deification of Buddha by Mahasangika fostered Mahayan Buddhism. That this question is about the sects. Schism in Buddhism, guys. Schism in Buddhism. Right? Now you have to understand this schism concept. I am telling you 90% of the students will not even study this schism. While studying, they are referring their standard books. Standard books mein hota nahi hai, the schism part. But you will always skip it. But now UPSC is focusing upon the subsets of Buddhism. Right? Not every subject because there are n number of subsets. But only those which are prominent guys. Right? So over here you will see when you will be studying Buddhist councils. I have told you in the class itself. In the second Buddhist council, you will be seeing the schism will be developing in the Buddhism, guys. And always schism happens because of the perspective, because of the learning. If Buddha has taught something, that means his disciples will not, all disciples will not be understanding him in the exact way as Buddha was telling you, telling them. Again, if I am seeing you, if I am teaching you in certain way, and I want my students to understand in a certain way which I am telling you, but not all students are getting as it is I am saying you. So you will be making your inference. Some other people will be making all your inference. So this happens in Buddhism in all religions. In everywhere you will see this, that factions happen. So in Buddhism you will be seeing that few sects of minority in the Sangha will say that the Vinaya Pitaka rule should be adding some more rules to it because Buddha used to say that. But the larger group of the Sangha says no. Whatever rules we have made, that is only what Buddha has said. So the larger group in the Sangha were known as Mahasangika. Mahasangika. That's why Mahasang means larger majority of the people were negating this. That no, we don't believe in you. And the minority was who are they? Sthavirvadins. They use Sthavirvadins were whom? They used to consider that we are the minority people. Minority people means there were like less people who were saying that Buddha used to say this also and we are the original preachers of Buddha. So they were not associating with them, uh, uh, with the other people in the Sangha. So that's why factions happened guys. Mahasangika and Sthavirvadin. In the second Buddhist council you will see. What is the date of second Buddhist council? Who are the chairman? Who was the priest over there? And in first Buddhist council, can you tell me the same thing? And what was the outcome of first Buddhist council? Who wrote Vinapitaka? Who compiled Vinapitaka? And who compiled Sutta Pitaka? Was Abhidhamma Pitaka was compiled in first Buddhist council? Can you tell me? So over the period of time in third Buddhist council, you will see that Mahasangika will be again factioning it out. Deko, you will not be understanding, sir, what was happening in Mahasangika, what was happening in Sthavirvadin. This is all detailed information. Even if you will search, you will not find exactly what is the difference, guys. 
because you will waste your time because they will not see upsc is not asking what was happening in mahasanghika they are simply asking mahasanghika was related to buddhism was related to mahayan buddhism or hinayana buddhism this much information guys so mahasanghika people used to consider that this buddha is a higher entity is a lohattar vadin so over here you will be seeing one sect will be emerging lohattar vadins means higher being right so there was one sect which has emerged over here guys ek vyavarika these are different different sects which un emerge under mahasanghika avir vadin you will be seeing the sects emerge as sarvasti vadin vatsi putra samatiyas samatiyas sect emerged in sthavir vadin later on in first sec second century from mahasanghika from this lohattar vadins you will be seeing one more school will develop madhyamika by nagarjun madhyamika mark it down write it down guys because while reading you have to learn it madhyamika was given by nagarjun and 100 layers later you will be seeing one more school will be coming that is yogagara that has emerged from mahasanghika only and in the same during the same time you will be seeing kanishka fourth buddhist council mahayan will be emerging mahayan and hinayana and sthavir vadin will be giving rise to your hinayana in the palas time period this mahayan will be converting into vajrayan right let me show you one image and that image you try to learn guys theek hai ye to maine aapko simply bata diya to after having this knowledge sthavir vadin belong to mahayan buddhism no they were belonging to hinayana part lokattar vadin was an offshoot of mahasanghika sect this is right deification of buddha by mahasanghika fostered mahayan this is also right first is wrong when you will do first wrong you will left with b and c then third is right also two is right so you are two and three will be answer see this particular faction guys dekho sangha sangha was formed during the time period of buddha itself but later on propagated by his disciples in the second buddhist council dekho yahan pe likha bhi hai split at second third buddhist council mahasanghika and sthavir vadin emerged mahasanghika believed in the higherness of buddhism so lohattar vadin means buddhism is a transient being he is not existing over here he is a transient being higher being right so over here you will be finding ek vyavarika also what is the clear difference nobody will ask again they will be asking you that ek vyavarika is related to mahasanghika or sthavir vadin or if even if they have to make it easy ek vyavarika belonging to buddhism or jainism so like this they will be asking it in sthavir vadin you have vatsi putriya vibhajya vadins and sarvasti vada as it is if you will remember this guys i am telling you nobody else is reading it, it reading it like that you also tell me those who are new those who are not my students have you seen this chart before are you under, were you understanding this chart before no right majority of you would not have been understood this chart before not even not even in your standard books right guys so certain things you have to take as per the demand of the upsc so over here then you will see that during second century bc to first century bc mahayan will be developing and over here hinayan will be developing and mahayan then will be giving you madhyamika school by nagarjun which gave you sunyat doctrine yogagara which was believing in the controlling of your breath right and then later on in palas time you will be seeing tantric buddhism in the form of vajrayan and in the class we have like clear cut understood what is vajrayan hinayan mahayan if you are my student you might be having the clear understanding of it no confusion at all right guys so this is the way you have to understand so by this question you are understanding that i have to understand the schism in buddhism the differences in buddhist philosophies to groups in buddhism right next question of 2019 very easy you are understanding 2019 2022 2021 recently they are asking uh, questions on buddhism and jainism guys so deification of the buddha they have asked which of the above are feature of mahayana buddhism mahayana buddhism they are focusing upon so this is till 2019 after 2019 2020 they entered into the sects of other buddhism not only mahayan so you understand how they are changing so mahayana buddhism deification of buddha yes there were there that they were believing in the idol of buddha trading the path of bodhi sattva so first one is right you are sure about first that deification was happened image worship was used to happen because idol worship used to happen so first and three you are sure about For first and three are in the d option also you must be knowing that trading the path of bodhisattvas mean mahayan feature was 
feature was bodhisattva only that means you have to be bodhisattva that means you will not at attain enlightenment you will only be you will be knowing the path of enlightenment enlightenment but you will be delaying it understood so ultimately what you have understood from here guys that in order to for a sangha you have two choices how you will join sangha one by renunciating your family you will be known as bhikkhu or bhikkhuni and other one is by being with your family you will be known as upasaka now here factions came into picture if you are a part of hinian sect and if you have achieved achieved the salvation then you will be known as arhat and if you have if you are a part of mahayan sect then you will be on the path of bodhisattva to become a bodhisattva and bodhisattva is on the path of enlightenment he will learn the method that how to achieve enlightenment but he will not attain enlightenment guys right 10th question come to 10th question guys with reference to ancient history indian history who among the following is future buddha yet to come to save the world now this is a very easy but what you have to know from this question you have to not only know that the answer is c mathriya but you also have to know that what is what are the feature of avlet avlokiteshwar lokeshwar padmapani who were these these were the eight one of the eight bodhisattvas guys and you have to know their features that avlokiteshwar was having what he was having the buddha's compassion guys right compassion so over here you will find now eight bodhisattvas you should know that avlokiteshwar denotes the compassionate bodhisattva one who listens to the world's pleas and responds in a skillful way similarly you will see maitreya was the future buddha right over here vajrapani was related to the aggression of buddha guys buddha's power was uh, reflected by vajrapani bodhisattva so if you have our ancient history notes you will find over here very crux notes are there guys compilation of all the sources you need not any you need not any other source for your preparation for ancient history guys right that book is enough uh, in itself right eight bodhisattvas are written in over there you have to identify that what are the unique feature of those bodhisattva eight only right guys over here you will be seeing the samant bhadra he is related to the universal buddha or associated with meditation come to next question guys that with reference to the religious practice in india the sthanakvasi sect belongs to simply they have asked in 2018 sthanakvasi sect when you study jainism you study two sect digambar and shvetambar you know the story behind that guys right under shvetambar you study sthanakvasi and murti pujika murti pujika digambar mein you study tera panthi 20 panthi right so this is the sect of jainism simply they have asked they have not even asked that it is a sect of digambar or shvetambar guys right see this question guys now with reference to the religious history of india 2017 every year you are seeing that buddhism and jainism one question is fixed so first question swatrantika and samitiya were sects of jainism no these were the sects of buddhism also i have shown you these were the sects of sthavirvadin right sarvastivadin so this is wrong first is wrong this will not be your answer this will not be your answer sarvastivadin held that constituents of phenomena were not fully momentarily but existed forever in latent form so you must understand that sarvastivadin was one sect who were saying who were uh, defeating the whole idea of buddhism buddhism sole idea of all philosophies were that we are in transient motion we are not permanent self whereas one such sect of buddhism which focused upon that we are not wholly momentary they are showing that they are telling us that we are not completely imp imp uh, completely impermanent but also we are existing in some latent form also understanding so they are somewhat debating the philosophy of overall buddhism which they were saying understand this guys clearly overall buddhism is saying that we are nothing we are in complete transience we are an, we are impermanent beings right but the sarvastivadin are saying that we are not wholly momentary but also we are existing in a latent form so your b option will be correct two option will be correct so from here what you will understand guys that now you have to have the knowledge of sarvastivadin a bit swatantrika samitiya you know that they are of sthavirvadin sect and these three sects are of sthavirvadin not of mahasangika so right now in your notes when you will be making the buddhism notes or if you are my students and uh, you are waiting for the crash course then you no need not worry about these things guys i'll be giving you full fledgedly right over here you see <clears throat> 
uh, in these notes you have to add that okay when you are writing the factions mahasangika sthavirvadin then sthavirvadin you are making gokulika swatantika samatiya under that you add sarvastivadin also and the philosophy it has right not more much more in depth question will be asked from here i am sure about it isse zyada mushkil isse zyada in depth question they will not be giving you understand see this is one of the most important question and this has been asked in 2016 how options have been converted as questions in 2020 so that means you don't just ignore the options which are not right guys over here they have they are asking you cultural history of india the memorizing of chronicles dynastic histories and epic tales was the profession of who of the following that means they want to know the term shramana by 2020 they have mentioned shramana in 2016 if you are following the pattern carefully then they asked shramana again in 2020 so that means shramana are those people who are following the penance life penetic life ascetic life right so this is wrong pravarjika is a wanderer agraharika is a person who has given certain responsibilities to take care of the land guys agraharika next time they can also ask you agraharika i am telling you so agraharika are looking after the land which are given in charity write it down in your notes and magad are the people these magad is not the state or the mahajanapad this magad are those people who memorizes the chronicles jo kahaniyan sunate the right dynastic histories epic tales right so they were magad and this question can again be converted in 2024 guys for example over here they will be taking you taking one part agraharika now new two statements new two words they will be taking and then match of the following like this they will be giving come to 15 question so you are understanding in 9 years they have asked more than 15 16 question from uh, buddhism and jainism guys new you must be understanding the importance of buddhism and jainism right just wait guys okay so which of the following kingdoms are associated with the life of buddha i hope you all are connected and must be understanding that what you have to take out from buddhism and jainism so when you will study buddhism and jainism again or if you will be studying from me then i'll be explaining you the pre vq first and then we will be seeing that how we have to delve in the topic so kaun se jagahein which of the places are related to the life of buddha guys that where buddha has been there avanti gandhara kosla and magad what places are you sure of you must be sure of magad because buddha presence was there in magad right whereas avanti was in south if you know the avanti mahajan but not south but in malwa region that much far buddha might not have gone gandhara is northwest ye to aap this you might be cancelling out that gandhara is in northwest buddha was never there because there will not any stoop you will find of buddha right so gandhara you will be cancelling out so when you will be cancelling out two two options will be cleared off magad is in answer so four four is there right and you are left with kosla and avanti so kosla and avanti see uh, kosla was near to that particular area of vachi so not vachi but of mal mahajanpad so kosla he might have visited but he did not visited this avanti also because these are of far off places next time they can also include asmak do you know the place of asmak matse surasen chedi so all the 16 mahajanpads you should be knowing from this particular question too guys so your answer will be 3 and 4 but what you have to make out from this question that you have to focus upon all the 16 mahajanpads guys right i hope i am making my point clear guys now let us to the next chapter that is of mauryan empire guys till now what we have seen see you have to cover like this only we have seen prehistoric times then we have seen seen ivc previous question vedic age and uh, your buddhism and jainism now you see the mauryan empire question guys which have been asked in the examination so they are asking according to kautilya's arthashastra 2022 latest prelims question guys which of the following are correct now this type of questions you don't have much information about right but for the first time you will see in 2020 prelims if you if you gave this attempt you will first hand feel this question that whether we will be attempting this question or not you, in your mind you will feel that because this type of question you cannot target because these statements are not written in any of the standard books guys and this will this will happen i am telling you now if five questions are coming out of this that you can only solve three questions guys by your standard sources the rest two questions might be very very random 
from any sources they will be picking you this is the pattern of upsc you don't have to run behind these two you have to target these three all right you have to understand this so let us see this a person could be slave as a result of judicial punishment so this statement is wrong guys you will see in earth shastra because you will not be able to read earth shastra completely so in these particular type of question try to avoid it or if you can eliminate any any statement then you go ahead with it right okay so this particular part is wrong because it is not written in it it is written in the earth shastra that a person could not be a slave as a result of judicial punishment second statement if a female slave bore her master a son she was legally free this is right this is right and even if you don't know enrich your information guys add this your information right it doesn't mean that now you will read the old kotalyas at shastra next time they will be asking about dharma shastra next time they will be asking you about any other book magastri zendika that doesn't mean that you have to go into the depth of ar shastra now right you try to understand in that year 2022 if they have asked three question two were easy comparatively which you can solve one was something was absurd like this understanding again i am seeing you this so don't see things in compartments cumulatively if you will see then upsc pattern is such that 30 to 40 question you will be knowing i am telling you guys for sure this is the pattern of upsc now third statement if a son born to a female slave if a son born to a female slave was fathered by her master the son was entitled to legal status of a master son this is very correct i hope these explanation the explanation are self explanatory right so correct you have to find 2 and 3 are correct guys so these type of question your knowledge will not work in these type of question guys because every year you will see some new uh, stuff will be coming so you have to on the spot if you can eliminate then eliminate otherwise don't attempt these type of questions also i'll give you one tip also guys those who are watching dedicatedly by heart if you are still present over here then i'll give you one tip that how you by doing some by doing some things like some tricks you can say it but i will not recommend it whole heartedly that you have to implement it but understand out of 100 question if you have you are sure that 30 to 40 questions which you have attempted i am sure about it that they are 100% correct then that means accuracy will be your accuracy will be 90% i am not saying 100% so if you have attempted 40 question i am saying that okay you are comfortable 35 questions will be right in your this 40 and in the rest 30 questions you have taken risk so risk you have to take with those question where you can eliminate even one statement or two statements right then you take the risk in these 30 question and in this 30 question you will see that your success rate or your uh, accuracy will be slightly less that by that you can say that 15 questions are correct right even if you do like this that 35 questions are correct over here and 15 questions are correct over here then you are scoring above 90 and above 90 95 is a safe score for prelims guys but if you want to like increase your score then you have to attempt a bit higher guys but higher only when you feel like that you have made these 30 40 ekdam absolutely right then only you go for these 30 to 40 some short, some uh, like guesswork you can do if these 30 to 40 are not sure then you cannot do much guesswork because all of this will be then accuracy will come down understanding guys that's why in the test series also you must be noticing that your score is going down so these type of tricks you have to utilize in the examination too series who among the following rulers advice is subject to this his inscription okay now they are talking about inscription that means that ruler must have inscripted something somewhere then this code you understand whosoever praises his religious sect or blames other sect out of excessive devotion to his own sect that means i am praising my sect and blaming other sect that other sects are not the sects means other sects are or other religions are not good my religion is superior with the view of glorifying his own sect he rather injures his own sect very severely now it is basically talking about the secularism concept that you should be tolerant secularism not secularism but tolerance this feature is shown tolerance that a ruler must be tolerant towards all the religions you can make it out but ashoka was also tolerant samudragupta was also tolerant harshvardhan was also tolerant krishna devraya was also a tolerant ruler ruler right but how will you know that answer because these was inscribed in the inscriptions of ashoka guys 
Ashoka was inscripting or uh, was putting these pillar addicts, minor pillar addicts or rock addicts, right? So that's why the answer over here you will go towards Ashoka. Samudra Gupta, Harshvardhan, Krishna Dev Rai, there was not much inscription you will find in their time period, guys. Yes, Samudra Gupta, you have Allahabad inscription. Nothing like that is written. Allahabad, the, it was the eulogy written by Harisen. And it was basically the conquest of South Southern Indian victory. Military expansion was written. Harshvardhan, have you find any source of inscription? Ban Sekhla you find, but not regarding Harshvardhan. Right, Krishan Devrai inscription you find, Amukta Malde and all it is written, but nothing is written like this. So you automatically going towards Ashoka. Understanding guys? 2016 question, which of the following had first deciphered the edicts of Emperor Ashoka? So simple, it's James Prince. But now your job to read about George Bilher to Max Muller to and William Jones to. Understand them, <coughs> understand about them too. That who are they? In our PYQ notes, which you are, you must be having, and those who want to buy the PYQ booklet, guys, every PYQ are like written in a very good format, explained in a very good format. So about Max Murray, you should know that he translated Upanishads, right? And he researched on Sanskrit language. Okay, Muller translated and published a collection of Indian fables called Hitop Desh also. Okay, he also published the complete Rigved in Sanskrit using manuscripts available in England. Right, about William Jones over here you will find in modern also you understand he formed the Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1784 to encourage Oriental studies. He was well versed with this Sanskrit knowledge too and has a vast knowledge about Hindu and Muslim law. Right, so these were the questions which has been asked from modern empire again. The majority of the questions you have seen has been asked from Buddhism and Jainism guys. Right, so utmost importance. Next, you come to Gupta Age. Right? Gupta Age, the political history of Gupta Age. First of all, you must be knowing about their pillar inscriptions. They, or their inscriptions, if you know about, then you have uh, in the inscription part of Allahabad inscription, the famous inscription, right? Over here, you will have Bhittari inscription too. Over here, you will have Mansour inscription too. Iran inscription too you find in this time period where Sati evidence was found. Okay, literary evidences you got from Guptas like Fahin visited over here, Fahin travel account are there. Uh, over here Vishak Dutta's book will be there. Right, so you must be seeing in the revision also in my classes also we have elaborately, elaboratively done Guptas. So understand with reference to the forced labor, forced labor means Vishti in India during the Gupta period, which one of the following statement is correct. Okay. See first of all B part C. See the B part. It was totally absent in Madhya Pradesh, Kathiawar regions of the Gupta Empire. Things like that can happen if Gupta Empire main area was MP and Maghat, this uh, region only. In the Chandragupta 2 time period, we are ruling overall northern India. So it was totally absent. You cannot say it, right? So this is wrong. The forced laborer was entitled entitled to weekly wages. No, forced labor was forced labor means I am at my will making that particular person work for me. That's why it is forced labor. I am not even paying them. If I'm paying them, then they are my employees, right? So this is not this cannot be the answer. The eldest son of the laborer was sent to the forced laborer. This is also wrong, guys. It is not fixed that idle son of the laborer will be sent as a forced labor, right? So the most suitable answer it was is A. It was considered a source of income for the state and a sort of tax paid by the people by working, right? So it is a source of income for the state. Come to the next question, guys. 2020, with reference to the history of India, the terms Kuliapa and Dronvapa denote measurement of land. Is Varda? Terms related to the measurement of land, guys. Like in today's time, Gaz is being used, Vish, uh, Vishwas is being used, Hectare is, is being used. So at that point of time, Kuluyapa and Dronvapa used. Two Dronvapa, one Kuluyapa. Right, and it was found in the inscription. It was written in the inscription like that. Copper plate inscription found in Bengal. This cannot be the answer. This is not the answer. This is not the answer, guys. Come to the post Gupta period. Now, post Gupta period, guys, you understand. Post Gupta period means 550 decline happened 
After this, 550 to 600 what was happening. I told you that over here, Thaneswar, Pushyabhutis, Kannauj, uh, Kannauj, your Mokharis, over here, later Guptas, Magadha region, over here, Godas, Shashankas, over here, your Matrakas, right? So, see this question, 2021, and pure timeline based question, guys. From the decline of Guptas until the rise of Harshvardhana in the early 7th century, which of the following kingdoms were holding power in northern India? So, when you study medieval history also, early medieval history, then you come across certain dynasties. And when you have done ancient and medieval both, rightly, at least you must be knowing the basics, then only you can attempt this question rightly. So, Guptas of Magad was there, yes. For them only we are saying later Gupta. Paramaras of Malwa, they are the Rajput dynasty and Rajput emerged in 9th century onwards. 9th, 10th century they were there. Early 7th century we are talking about. So, this is wrong. Pushyabhutis of Thaneswar, yes, they were there. Mokharis of Kannauj, yes, they were there. Yadavas of Devgiri again, Maharashtra. And you study this in when Allauddin Khilji was conquering the states. As I have told you that you have to learn by heart the root of Allauddin Khilji. What will happen by learning the Allauddin's military expansion? Deko guys, in the class also, I told you, you have to remember only two rulers' military expansion. One is of Allauddin Khilji, how he annexed all the states. Second is of Akbar, not anybody else's military expansion you have to know. Military expansion means Alauddin Khilji first captured Gujarat, then captured Ranthambur, then captured Chittor, and timeline also you should know, like I am knowing it. Then it will go ahead 1305, Yadavas of Dalatagiri, then Kakatiyas 1311, then Hosalas 1311. Similarly of Akbar too, that over here he conquered Malwa, then over here this Gondwana land, then over here this Chittor area, right, later on Gujarat area, 50, uh, your 1572, over here then your Gujarat has happened, then Ranthambur, then Haldi Ghati battle, like this I have told you, I have taught you in the class itself, right, so how will it get The spill over effect of this knowledge which you are gaining will be seen in these parts, guys, that you can easily eliminate the parts, right, the, this type of things you will get in the examination help of how you are seeing the subject so this is right this is wrong to two cannot be answer two two over here cannot be the answer over here yadavas five will also not be the answer so one three four six you are reaching up to but now options are not coming like this so you have to have the knowledge exactly right i hope you are getting what i'm trying to say guys now you come to harsha empire harsha empire from was from 550 not 550 but basically Roughly, I am telling you, 590 to uh, 650 or 750 you can take. Okay, 600 though Harsha was there, right? So, with reference to the following phrases, the nature of the Hundi generally referred to in the sources of the post-Harsha period. The Hundi was referred as, it was the advisory issued by the king to his subordinates. No, a diary to be maintained for daily accounts. No, it was a bill of exchange, guys. Right? So, see it as it is. That means terminology they are focusing upon. And in the last test of PRP, if you have given, there are a lot of terminologies which are given. So, 50 to 60 terminologies you keep in your hand, guys. Now, questions related to personalities. Okay, this I am also considering it under the scholar's part. Latest 2022 question. With reference to Indian history, consider the following pairs. Historical person, Aryadev. Who was he? First of all, you understand about Arya that no matter if you haven't attempted it right or wrong, but Aryadev was a 3rd century scholar, 3rd century AD. And he was the disciple of Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna was the founder of Madhyamika school. Right, and so he was the disciple of Nagarjuna, that is Aryadev. So he is related to Buddhism. He gave one Chinese uh, type of Buddhism, guys, new uh, type of Buddhism he tried to give and that is basically followed by Chinese, right? So, Aryadev was related to Buddhism scholars. See, they have just asked that their inference is related to Buddhism, Jainism or not. They have not asked any personal de detail about Aryadev, so you, mind should work. Next time, they will give Aryadev and two different scholars, which you will never be hearing about. But now, how they are picking in the next year? You will be understanding, right? So that's why PIQ, PYQ are important, guys. As Shramana has been asked in 2016, later on they asked it in 2020, right? 
Dinganang. Dinganang was a Buddhist scholar when he was existing. He was existing during 480 to 5. Uh, 540 BC something that means 6th century or 4th century, 5th century onwards he were existing. Dingna. Then there is Nath Muni. He is a Vaishnavite scholar existing in Tamil Nadu region. So third is right and second is right. Aradev is wrong. So only two pairs are correct. Next question you come to with reference to the history of ancient India. Bhav Bhuti, Hastimala, Shameshwara were famous. Bhav Bhuti. You have to understand that Bhav Bhuti was existing during the 8th century AD, means 700 to 800 AD he was existing and he was present in the court of, you will see Yashovarman of Kannauj. So he was present at Yashovarman of Kannauj and Kannauj were basically ruled by Mokharis, then Harsha occupied all these states, right? He was basically used to write plays, poems, right? Also you will find that his important work is Uttara Ramacharita. This information is about Bhavuti, guys. Hastimala also was a play, uh, play writer, guys. He wrote around 10 plays. Okay. Just me say, Ekka naam Kaurav Vikrantha. Kaurav Vikrantha. No need to remember their names because in depth no, information is not being asked. You must be understanding, right? So, playwrights will be the answer. They can ask you Jain monks, they can ask you temple architects. Okay, one architect was present in the Navratan of Chandragupta 2 period. Who was that? That was Sankhu, guys. Sankhu. I hope you must be remember, remembering. Philosophers. They were not philosophers too, right? Some miscellaneous question we have to see. Now, these are not miscellaneous question, guys. With reference to ancient South India, Korkai, Pongpuhar, Muchri. Now these were the ports and these ports we study while we study Sangam, right? And in Sangam age, we study about three rulers. No, not three rulers, but three kingdoms. Chera, Chola and Pandyas. Every year I say that you have to have certain fixed knowledge about, about them. Though those who are attempting for state pieces, they will study them more. But you should have a fair idea about them. That who was the important ruler? I am just asking you. Important ruler? their capital city, their symbol or emblem you can say, or their unique feature, their ports. Like Korkai was related to whose port? Mucharis, Tondai, Puhar. Right, so over here Pum Puhar is basically Puhar and Puhar is basically present day Kaveri Patnam. Korkai is present in Tamil Nadu which was under Pandya. Muchri is present near the Kerala coast which was present in the Chera rule. Right, so these were ports basically. So next time they can ask you capital cities too. By the option they are signifying, signifying this. Next time they can ask you iron and steel making centers. Shrines of Jain Tirthankas too. Understanding guys? See the second question guys. Which one of the following explain the practice of Vataki Rutal as mentioned in the Sangam poems? As latest in 2023. So these are the questions which have been asked from Sangam and Sangam is the part of post-modern in the southern Indian history. Now the best statement which is describing Vataki Rutal is guys a king defeated in a battle committing ritual suicide by start starving himself to death. And in Jainism also you have one uh, ceremony like this. What do you call this? One process like this in Jainism. Salekhna. In Jainism, that is Salekhna. Similar, fast until death. Uh, right? You will be in fasting mode until you die. Okay? So these are certain random things which you have to keep in mind. Now these type of things are not written in your standard books. How will you be targeting this? You cannot target these questions, guys. Again, I am saying you 2023, five questions have come from ancient history. Three were, three, was, uh, three were easily solvable, whereas two were a bit typical, where you can guess or you should leave them, right? But these three you can acquire and these three you can only acquire when you have good understanding of ancient history. I hope you are understanding me guys. <laughs> With reference to the history of ancient India, 2021 question, which of the following statements are correct, right? First statement, Mithakshara was a civil law for upper caste and Dayabhaga was the civil law for lower caste? No guys. Mithakshara and Dayabhaga was both for upper caste. Whereas Dayabhaga, these rules of inheritance were existing in eastern India. And everywhere else Mithakshara was being followed. 
for the rules of inheritance. These are the part of Dharam Shastras, guys. Right? In the Mitakshara system, the sons claim the right to property during the lifetime of the father. And in Dayabhaga system, they are saying that only after the death of father, sons can claim the right to property. This is a right, guys. Again, Mitakshara system is itself explaining them. Next time they can ask you something else about Mitakshara system and Dayabhaga system. Right? Or next time they will ask you something else from the, uh, from any other source. Like 2021, they has asked about this Mitakshara Dayabhaga. 2022, they asked about Artha Shastra. 2022. Now I am telling you 2024, they can ask you about Dharam Shastras. Not how many Dharam Shastras? You will read whole Dharam Shastras? No. Either you will be inferring it that this can be wrong or right or you will be leaving it guys right third statement the mithakshara system deals with the matters related to the property held by male members only of a family now over here you are saying that only of a family that is male members of only of a family no guys female members were also dealing with the matters related to property whereas dava bhaga system deals with the matters related to property held by both male and female members so Daya Bhaga system, we have both member, member, male and female. In Mitakshara also we have both. So third is also wrong, one is also wrong. You will go ahead with two only. Alright guys. Next question. With reference to the history of ancient India, this we have seen, Bhavhuti, Hastimala, Shameshwara, right? With reference to the period of Gupta dynasty in ancient India, towns, Ghantasala, Kadura, Chol, again they are asking ports handling foreign trade guys. And if I ask you where Ghantasala, Kadura and Chol, where are they present? This Khandsala is present in Andhra Pradesh. Over here you will see Andhra Pradesh. This Kadura is also present in the eastern coast of Andhra Pradesh, guys. And Chol is present in the Maharashtra district. Over here. Chol. Kadura. Ghandasala. So these are the ports handling foreign trades. Next time, capitals of powerful kingdom. How they can give you this question of capitals of powerful kingdom they will ask you to chronologically arrange the capitals Chrono chronologically arrange not chronologically but north to south you have to arrange the capital okay let me give you the question first one is your mm, Kampilia. second one is your Viratnagar Third one is your Kotali. Fourth one is your Mahishmati. Now these are the capitals of powerful kingdoms. That is Mahajanpadas. You must have seen while reading Mahajanpadas, Kampilya was the capital of Panchalas. Achitra and Kampilya. Two capitals were Panchalas were having. Viratnagar was the capital of Matsya in Rajasthan. Kotali was the capital of Asmak in southern India or Deccan part, Maharashtra and Telangana border. In the classes, I have explained you very correctly and neatly, guys. Kotali was the capital of Kotali was the capital of Asmak. Mahishmati was the capital of Ujjain. So, if you will see the north to south, they can ask you to arrange. So, one is right, two is right, then four will come, then three will come. One, two, four, three will be the correct. Like this question can come, I am telling you, I am sure about it. If they will pick up these capitals, then they will form question like this, guys. Right, so you have to be careful about this, guys. <clears throat> Next question, which one of the following books of ancient India has the love story of the son of the founder of Sunga dynasty? And this is about Malvika Agri Mitram. Because he was of the Sunga dynasty written by Kalidasa. Right, that doesn't mean that you will not read about Swapna Vaswadatta. And this Swapna Vaswadatta is about the Queen Vaswadatta and Udayan. Who was Udayan? Udayan was the who was the ruler of Vatsa king. Right? And it was written by Bhasa. And Bhasa was existing before Kalidas. Bhasa's time period you must be know that 2nd century AD or 3rd century AD he was existing guys. Meghudutu was written by Kalidas itself. Ratnavali was written by Harisha. Kalidas's all literary sources you should be knowing and in the solution you must be seeing that we have given you all other literary works too. Though you cannot remember literary works like that. First what you have to do is 
you have to like when you are completing suppose one chapter two chapter chapter wise if you are moving ahead indus valley morrens in morrens time you will be seeing some scholars like uh, the source mrij katikam written by vishak dat he was existing in gupta's time period understanding if i ask you about uh, if i ask you about buddha charita was written by can you type buddha charita was given by and when he was existing guys buddha charita was written by ashwagosh and he was existing during the time period of kanishka and kanishka was existing during the time period of when kushan was there that means first century ad second century ad this is how you have to develop this timelines and turant within fraction of seconds information should come into your mind and how this will happen again revision revision will play the part and what you will revise when you have some fixed static part at your tips right so over here guys i am telling you you don't have to think about this soon i'll be launching my crash course on ancient history medieval history and this will suffice this will be sufficing if any easy to medium question will be coming you will be able to solve and if difficult question is coming then then that is difficult for all there is nothing lost in the difficult question but loss is happening when you cannot able to do the easy questions because that is being done by your competitors your competitors were not leave the easy questions or medium questions i hope you all understand all are understanding guys right one more beautiful question over here guys you see with reference to the scholars literature of ancient india consider the following statement panini is associated with pushyamitra okay one more question is there which we have left first see this question guys in the context of history of india consider the following pairs qpsc 2016 aripatti tanyurs ghatikas now what you have to understand from here that they are focusing upon the terminologies not all the southern indian terminologies should be on your tips but whatever written in our sources that means the sources which we are providing also the sources which you are seeing in standard books like 11th class ncert medieval history ncert or in the sangam age or in the imperial jola's time you are seeing certain words so try to have these words right so everybody must be knowing about ghatikas this is right they are colleges generally attached to temples right so over tenures what were tenures village donated to a single brahmin or a group of brahmins no guys the land donated to brahmin was known as brahmade what was velanvai gai known as velanvai gai what was pali chandanam i have told you in the class that these words are written in your 7th class ncert are you understanding 7th class ncert these thing is mentioned let me show you the snippet see this snippet guys this is the snippet of 7th class ncert not 7th yes 7th class ncert guys medieval history early medieval history you will be studying about imperial cholas and in that velaman gavagai was known as land of non brahmana peasant proprietors brahmade land gifted to brahmanas shala bhog maintenance of school devdan temples pali chandanam to jana institutions from here i am sure they will be picking up now pali chandanam and all so this tenures were basically the separate administrative units these were not the land donated to single brahmin sometimes in these separate uh, donated land you will be seeing a land donated to brahmin too so that is brahmade i hope you have to keep it very fixed and very clear guys when you will be making the separate notes for terminologies see you have to create these separate separate notes for the prelims examination prelims is getting tougher day by day you have to understand the severity of prelims prelim stage is much more difficult than the main stage because mains is predictable prelims is unpredictable right the main problem is over in the prelims guys okay so what you have to have for the d day from ancient history you should in the end you should have some scholars list you should have literature list you should have inscriptions list and the uh, things which we have terminologies very important so at least you should have these six seven list while doing my crash course i'll be making you i'll be like building up your list uh, simultaneously i'll be saying you that add this particular inscription in the list add this particular uh, literature into that list right so like this you should have some five six pages for the d day not the entire ancient history you are going to read i hope you must be getting it guys what i want to say 
Now you come to the next question, a beautiful question asked in 2020. <clears throat> Understand that they want you to set that who is associated with whom. Panani is associated with Pushya Mitra. Now timeline how you have to utilize, you understand the, that you have, if you have understood the timeline in right manner, you try to understand that Pushyamitra was existing during the Sunga's time period, founder of Sunga dynasty. Sunga was existing in post Maurya. Post Maurya was happening from 180 BC to 72 BC, Sunga was ex existing. In the revision class I made you rectify this, in my crash course and foundation I made rectify my students this. Those who students who say that this is examination, it is not about ratification, must be mistaken, guys. Right? First of all, you have to have the concepts, then those concepts should be by heart. Right? So, Panini is not associated with Pishwamitra because Panini was in the 6th century BC. This is wrong. Amarsina is associated with Harshavardhana. Amarsima is the one of the Navratan of Chandragupta 2 time period. Because Harshavardhana time period was who? Bana Bhatt was his court poet. Court poet. Ravi Kirti was the court poet, of, court poet of Ravi Kirti. Ashwa Ghosh, let me ask you some questions. First of all, let us solve this question. Amar Sima is associated with Harshavardhana. This is wrong. Kalidas is associated, associated with Chandragupta. This is right. Correct statement is three only. So what do you have to do? You have to see the Navratanas of Chandragupta too. In medieval time, I will tell you KDR Ashtadiggaj or KDR means Krishan Devarais and Akbar's Navratan. You should have you should have it on tips, guys. Because Shanku you will be finding over here, right? If I ask you about when was Nagasena present, if I ask you about when was Charak present, if I ask you about uh, Hala. When was Hala present or Gunadhyay? Can you write it? So Nagasen was present in the court of Kanish. Charak also present in the time of Kanish. Hala was a Satvanaha king. Present in the when Satvanas were existing. 17th ruler of Hala. And under Hala you will be finding Gunadhyay. What is the book name of Hala? Gatha Sapt Sai. It is the 100,000 of erotic poems you have written in this. Gatha Sapt Sai. So, in this particular part, I cannot teach you because I am constricted, right? Because I have to discuss the PYQ till now. Understanding? In the crash course, in my foundation course, we have like built the entire foundation, the themes we should be keeping in mind. Even if you are studying on your own, you have to like filter out the content, guys. Read what is not necessary and learn by heart what is necessary. This should be in your mind. The philosophy which I say, read and reject, you should utilize this. Read everything, but reject most of the things and absorb only certain things, guys. Right, so these are all the questions which has appeared in the last nine years by UPSC, given by UPSC in your subject, Ancient History, guys. And also last time, as we are moving, I'll let me show you the timeline. This timeline is of utmost importance. We have seen prehistoric times. Vedic age, Buddhism and Jainism, a lot of questions, around 14-15 questions have come from Buddhism and Jainism. Next year also you see two questions, one to two questions from Buddhism and Jainism. Then you have a rise of Mahajanpats, pre-Mauryan dynasty, Mauryan, post-Mauryan, Gupta, Harsha Empire and plus South Indian kingdoms. Major thing which is present, chronological order you should be knowing it. <laughs> Right, because if you are my student in every crash course, in every class of crash course or foundation, we start the class by just revising previously what we have studied. So that we are re strengthening our knowledge which we have gained. And also by that thing we move forward. So this was about your previous year questions of medieval history guys. So thank you so much guys, those who had patience and present till over here, thank you so much for uh, watching it and if you like the session please comment like and if you are new over here do subscribe and if you want me to make the PYQ session on the medieval history I'll be just commented I'll be making on medieval history too so we'll be having the accumulation of this PYQ again and again when you are starting a topic just see the PYQ first when you are starting Buddhist Buddhism Jainism so see the Buddhism and Jainism you have the PDF if you have the PDF see the Buddhism and Jainism question first and then start reading what is important what is not Again, for every topic, I have told you what perspective should be there. Prehistoric times, 
as i have told you see in the prehistoric times vedic age ibc sites are important buddhism and jainism philosophies are important modern political history gupta political history harsha political history apart from chronology right guys so thank you so much thank you for your time take care guys and all the best for your prelims